my name is Bethany Ray, and I am a teaching artist with Meadow Arts, a nonprofit art organization located in Twisp, Washington. And today we are going to make an art project inspired by artist Paul Clay's city and sun painting. And we're going to use geometric shapes to create our own city scene here using geometric shapes. What you will need for this art project is some items around the house that are geometric shaped. So if you don't have like squares or triangles, you can just cut them up, um, cut some cardboard up to make those shapes. Um, you can even use something like a post-it note for a square. So just find some things around your house that are geometric shaped. And you'll need some watercolor paper. Um, it doesn't matter what size, just whatever size you have. Uh, a set of watercolor paints, a pencil, brush, and water. And lastly, a paper towel. So go ahead and pause this video, gather all of these materials, and then press play once you have everything. Paul Klee was a Swiss-German artist who was born in 1879. When Paul Klee was a child, he was trained to become a violinist, but he decided to become an artist instead. He was very interested in color theory, which is how colors relate to one another, and so he used a lot of color in his paintings, like Castle and Sun. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about who Paul Clay was, um, let's go ahead and get started on our art project. So make sure that you have everything laid out. You've got your watercolor and you've got your water off to the side and your paper's ready to go, your shapes are nearby. And the first thing that you're gonna do is choose your first shape. I like to start off with like a square or um, like a square or a rectangle and you're going to basically start from the bottom of your paper and build up. So I'm going to take my shape and I'm going to place it near towards the bottom and I'm also going to work from left to right. So from bottom to top and left to right. Okay so again you're going to start tracing your shapes um, towards the bottom and from left to right of your watercolor paper. So I'm going to take my first shape, which is a square. I'm going to hold it down um, with my left hand and with my other hand, I'm just going to trace around the edges. Now this might take a little bit of focus and a little bit of practice to do. It's okay if you, your shape is not traced um, perfectly, that's all right. Um, it takes quite a bit of practice to be able to trace shapes like this. So remember, go slow and take your time. And you might have to stop and pick up your pencil. So instead of going all the way around like this, you might have to stop and pick up your pencil and do one side at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna make like a little house, I think, right over here. And it's really up to you the type of buildings that you wanna make. Think about how big, how small, um, whether it is you're using rectangles or circles or squares, um, use your imagination. It really is up to you what kind of buildings that you want to make with your geometric shapes. So now I'm going to grab a triangle and then just put on top here for my little house. And again, trace around all the edges. And I'll go ahead and stop here and let you keep going. So you're going to go from left to write and fill your whole paper with your buildings. Um, go ahead and pause the video right now and fill up your paper and then press play once you've done that first part. Okay, so now that you've drawn all your buildings with pencil first, you're going to go back on top of all those areas that you drew in pencil and draw with a crayon, a black crayon. So you're going to outline all those areas that you did with a pencil with a black crayon. So just go carefully and go ahead and get started on this part. 
And once you're finished, you can go ahead and press um, play once again, and we'll get started on the next part after that. Okay, so now that everything's outlined with black crayon, uh, the next step is to fill in each shape with a color. Um, I would suggest just sticking with rainbow colors uh, using watercolor um, because if you use black or brown um, and that black and brown hits any or touches any of the other colors you're using, your other colors are just not going to look as bright. So I would suggest using red, orange, yellow, green, blue, or purple. The other thing you can think about is if we look at Paul Clay's uh, painting here, City and Sun, um, you can also think about using warm versus cool colors. So warm colors, again, are red, orange, and yellow, and cool colors are green, blue, and purple. So here, it looks like he used mostly warm colors, but maybe in your painting, you want to use mostly cool colors. So that's just something that you can think about while painting. So the first step with watercolor is to get your brush wet. So you're going to get, um, you're going to fill your brush with water and then just scrape your brush alongside the edges of your cup to let any extra water fall back in the cup. And then I like to say use your um, brush like a little ballerina on her tiptoes, okay? So to take care of your brush and to take care of the paint, you're going to just take your brush and on its tiptoes or on the very tip of your brush, you're going to kind of swirl around in the paint. Uh, please don't take your brush and smash it into the paint or try to scoop out your paint because that's going to ruin your paint and your brush. So just stay on those ballerina toes or on the tip of your brush, okay? So I'm going to use some red and I'm going to go along and fill in all of the little shapes that I want with red. Um, even though we have crayon down, crayon kind of builds a little wall to keep the paint inside the shape. Um, it is still possible for paint, of course, to escape outside. So make sure that you're just doing your best to stay inside those lines. And you're just going to paint each shape one color at a time. So we're not really mixing colors in this project. We're just going to paint each shape uh, a different color. Um, I have had students who thought about, hmm, maybe all circles can be red and all squares can be orange. So maybe you come up with a certain plan for what each shape or what color is each shape. That's fine too. Um, again, this is your work of art, so you can do whatever you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and keep painting all of my shapes. And you're welcome to pause the video and then fill in all of your shapes. And once you've filled in all of your shapes, go ahead and press play and I'll show you how we're going to do the background. Okay, so now that you've filled in each shape with the color of your choice, um, the very last thing that we're going to do is paint in the background. So this again can be up to you. Um, in my example here, I painted my background blue. Um, say you want kind of like a night scene, maybe you want to do purple for something really bright and sunny, you could do yellow. So again, the background is totally up to you. Um, just use one color though, just so that the other colors can really stand out. If you use more than one color, then all the colors of your buildings will kind of disappear. So, and I would start from the top of the page and kind of work my way down towards the bottom just to give all the shapes time to dry because you don't want to bump into some of those beautiful colors you just laid down and some of the paint kind of runs into each other. Lastly, just be careful about um, the way you paint close to the edges of the shapes. So again, you don't want to bump into those other colors because some of them might still be drying. So just be careful and take your time as you fill in your background. So go ahead and pause the video and get started on your background and then press play once you've got that all filled in. All right, 
I hope you enjoyed creating your very own Paul Clay inspired little building painting with me today. And I look forward to the next time that we make art together. Bye for now.